Okay, guys, so let's start our session on mobile. Uh, my name is Monika Mahoska. I'm uh, on behalf of the organizer. I will be here with you today during the whole day. In case you've got any questions regarding the conference, please contact me. Um, please also use our mobile app, uh, Digital Dragons 2017. You can find useful information there and you can also rate the speakers. You can find more information on our first speaker. Um, let me introduce. Tom Kinberg from mobilefreetoplay.com. Tom, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you. Cool. I will. Uh, I was going to let everyone wander up here, as uh, quite a long way to walk. Um, and yeah, just let the last people come in. Cool. Okay, I'll just give everyone a quick introduction who I am, what I do. So I have been working in mobile for around eight years, actually since the birth of the iPhone, iPhone 3G. Uh, and I've done a number of roles working as producer, game designer, publisher, uh, and now I work as a consultant on, with Mobile Free to Play. Mobile Free to Play is a game design blog primarily where we break down and deconstruct the best uh, games on mobile. We always try and give honest and solid feedback about what makes games tick, and with that, then you can inform your own game design. This particular uh, talk, though, is about messenger games, a brand new field. So, Lauren Good from The Verge said, iMessage is the glue that keeps me stuck to the iPhone. This was a year ago now. I think what she meant to say is that we've evolved over the eight years of mobile. At the beginning, people had a phone, then they grew into the apps, and now they're actually coming back to what actually makes you stick and come back to your phone, which is a communication device. Most people spend most of their time in messengers. There was actually a report by SimilarWeb that the average person spends 23 minutes and 23 seconds in some form of messaging or communication app on their phone. This is the highest majority of time spent on a mobile device. So, Messengers are important. Let's take a look at the messenger landscape so you can really get an idea of what messengers are and how they're working. Apps on the App Store have grown. The number of people who own a phone, Android or iOS is huge now. Most of the population, I think 50% of the adult population now owns some form of smartphone. And therefore, the numbers involved in apps and uh, on these devices has increased. So for an app to have a top 50 grossing position, you have anywhere between 1 to 100 million MAU. That's a huge number. That's more than the uh, population of Poland, population of the UK. Candy Crush Saga, top five, probably one of the biggest apps, has 454 million MAU. This was reported when they got acquired by Activision. But let's take a look at the messengers. Messengers absolutely annihilate all other uh, numbers. 889 million is for WeChat. WeChat alone is almost entirely Chinese, the Chinese population. It's estimated that 90% of all adults have installed WeChat in China. iMessage, which is the default messaging app on iOS, has 1 billion active devices, as reported by Apple in 2016. This is actually probably slightly higher now, but as it comes as a default, Again, the audience and the number of users using this is increasing all the time. But the big, the big guy in the room, Facebook Messenger, this has grown so big in the last past year and the trajectory keeps getting higher. 1.2 million because it's cross-device, Android and iOS, and that's MAU, that's people logging in every single day. Four times the size of the US. So what we know here is the scale of this market is huge. At F8 recently, this is just a month ago, or two weeks ago actually, uh, David Marcus, who represents Messenger, mentioned 1.5 billion games have been played on Messenger already. That's a huge number again. If you actually work out how long Messenger's been around, uh, being tested with the gaming functionality, it's less than six months, or approximately 5,700 games per second are being played right now on a beta version of Messenger. So, scale matters. Messenger apps provide scale. There's also a huge blue ocean at the moment. They're so new. 
The, uh, the announcement of iMessage as an app store only happened 11 months ago. The, the announcement of Facebook Messenger only happened six months ago, and Facebook Messenger still hasn't actually launched. There's a relatively no, low number of developers on each of the platforms, and there's a huge amount of real estate to be featured. So being there first, being quick, is still an important factor right at the moment. To work with Facebook as well is quite complicated. You have to approach them directly, and they're only working with a limited number of partners. But actually getting in there now would be a, would be a huge advantage for any developer. So let's break down what, how, and how these uh, Messenger apps work for you as a developer. So if you wanted to put your game on there or have your game being accessible. Discovery is the important thing. Everyone's talking about discovery is broken on the App Store. No one can find anything. So let's think of messengers as a new platform for discovery. All of the messengers are putting games center stage. Uh, WeChat has a direct games link. Facebook Messenger involves uh, games within the feed, and they're also trialing a direct games button on the bottom, make it, making it accessible from every single screen within Messenger. And the App Store, or I, iMessage, has a dedicated App Store only for Messenger games. Installing Messenger games has also been as fluid and as simple as possible, with most of them having one or two clicks. Um, Facebook Messenger has it seamless with install and play with a single click, and the iMessage App Store has um, a normal App Store interface, so download, and when you're logged in, you can download for free. Playing the games is also very, very uh, simple and native. Uh, WeChat currently doesn't have a messaging platform, so you can play natively. It sends you to the App Store. But the other two are currently overlaying the messenger experience with a full screen native experience that you can play and use like a normal app. This means that the games can be engrossing. They're not casual add-ons anymore. They're not simple. They're fully uh, usable and interactive games. So how do Messenger apps actually work? There are some slight technical details, and you have to be aware of this when you're developing. The first thing is the technology. Only iOS uh, allows you to still use native code as you would in any other app, so Swift or Objective-C. The other main technology that's driving this is HTML5. HTML5 gaming has been around for about around five years, but it's never really taken off. I see Messengers as going to be this way that you'll, you'll start to push it in, in, in many other directions. A nice thing is that if you do develop a game in HTML5, it works in all browsers, and you can use it on things like Congregate or uh, other platforms on the web. It's important to note that monetization isn't available. It's also unlikely to become available apart from an iMessage. I'll go into some reasons for that a little bit later. A core part of Messenger, though, and why everyone uh, can see its growth being so rapid is the, is the sharing. You can't play a Messenger game without another person. This immediately gives it a higher K factor, as every game requires two people. And they use the messengers themselves to share. This makes the platform and the games work seamlessly together. Think about, think about the idea of the messenger platform, though, as an app store within an app store is wrong. You can't actually consider it being a fully-fledged app store. If you wanted all of the features, you'd have to make an app. So this is something to be aware of thinking about how you're going to make it into a business model. One of the main rules that happens on uh, that has been happening on Apple is uh, the 3.2 section of their developer rules, which is always stated is unacceptable to create an app store within an app store. So Facebook Messenger's app store experience is never going to feel like it's selling these games. Every single Messenger app will going to be free, and I'm very, very sure that they won't supply in-app purchases directly within Facebook Messenger, as it would be too much like an app store. These high restrictions and li lead to little chance of IAP heavy gaming. So, if you can't make money through IAP, how are you going to make money? At the moment, very few games are making money. Scales where they're making it. Uh, uh, the scale of the app stores, uh, the messenger apps, is where the interesting thing is. Get the audience first, and over time, they'll be able to make money. So, I'm going to break down about six different messenger games now about what makes them good, how to design for messenger. If you've never actually played an iMessage game, this is the sort of interaction you can expect. So the standard iMessage format, you're talking to your friend, 
You ask them if they want to play a game. You can send, and the messenger, or the game, sorry, sends within the messenger itself, and the new game is started. You simply click this, and then you're taken to a full screen experience. So let's meet Game Pigeon. Game Pigeon is one of the largest iMessage games at the moment, and is actually a suite or collection of games. So it's nine different games, each of them very casual, very simple. Within that, it has two particular games, Pool and Battleships. Pool is a very strong game. It has a lot of good design decisions about it. When we look at how a person can interact with this game, you have to think of it in very short asynchronous sessions that you need to add meaning to the session that you're within. To do that, you need to add a small amount of skill, a small amount of challenge, but give enough information that someone can make a good call. Pool is especially has three points where you can add skill. You have the power of the cue, you have the strike point of the ball, and you have the spin on the ball. Each of these affects your move, and it leads you as a game player to feel powerful. You understand how you can affect that board in a single turn. Something like Battleships doesn't naturally work well on Messenger. As a player, you only have a single choice. That's where to place your bomb. If you miss, your turn is over. If you hit, you get another go. The chance of hitting and missing is around 50-50, but if you think about the actual skill level involved, there's only a single piece of information, which is where was the last bomb, and whether I should choose to put that again. This doesn't lead to a positive reinforcing gameplay. You spend too many times taking turns that end up in bad results. Therefore, make sure when you're designing that each choice and each session of your short-term game has meaning. There's challenge, there's skill, there's elements that you can control that will really affect that gameplay move. Pool also does a great job of every turn develops. Every turn has a skill factor. The board itself keeps changing, the pool cues, uh, the different power levels, the exact angles all need to be adjusted every round. So every single move you do affects your other player, and when they send it back to you, it's an entirely new experience. This works really, really well on Messenger. Another thing that works well is instant action. You have a very short period of time in which to engage players, usually around the 30-second window. Therefore, get them straight into it. Taking something that's commonly known in the real world, such as basketball, everyone knows the objective is to get the ball in the hoop, but applying a very strict time limit, in this case with Kobe Hoops, it's 30 seconds, and having a single uh, action with a single finger swipe works really well. If you create a game that requires too many actions before someone gets into the competitive element or interactive element, you're going to have a poor gameplay experience for the first two rounds, and people are going to drop out. In this case, Battle Bash is a turn-based uh, RTS type game, a little bit um, where you have to attack the other player and kill their, uh, kill their uh, tanks. However, you always start in the top left, and they always start in the bottom right. In this case, you're going to take two moves to even see your opponent. What would have been a better design choice here is if you were randomly placed on the board with your four, four elements and the other four were placed randomly. That way, as soon as you start the game, you're straight into the action. So always think about trying to start every round with high intensity. This high intensity is what will get people excited, get people to start more games, and get people to share. The next is actually designing your session to have good opportunities to ease people in. Easing people into sessions is what encourages them to restart and try a new session again. In this uh, game, FRVR Basketball, all you have to do is get the ball in the net again. Basketball seems to be a pretty common messenger game at the moment. Um, but without any on-screen instructions, with one single uh, image that moves with a swipe, you can actually teach people that mechanic and they can ease themselves in. The next thing is easing people out. You want people to leave this session uh, feeling happy or excited. Words with Friends does a really good example of this where once you've played your, uh, your word, you're kicked out of the app immediately. It sends it automatically, gets you back to your messenger. Think of it as creating experiences that are snapshots. They only want to be done for 30 seconds and 
you need to challenge people for that short period of time and then kick them out again. Rounds ending naturally. <clears throat> Meet Everwing. Everwing's probably the most popular game on Facebook Messenger right now, and it's also one of the more intense uh, gameplay experiences. It uses RPG and social. In, in this case, you have to level up a character, unlock dragons, breed or uh, find eggs, and generally increase stats. There's not, there's not many other games that have done this, but there's one reason that this works so well. Instead of creating a single session game, they create a group session. This is where within Facebook Messenger, again, you can have a group chat, and everyone within that group chat can be involved in the game. You each post a high score, and those high scores are ranked. The winner of the, uh, of the leaderboard after a week gets extra prizes. This creates the sort of idea of uh, socially competitive amongst multiple people, and therefore has a really high engagement rate. The other thing is that Everwing has done a direct daily message. Uh, this is where the game itself sends you a message with dynamic content that changes. So who's in pole position today, who's put in the highest board, it engages you to play again. As you'll see, you, uh, there is the play now button on every single message, again encouraging people to come back. So let's look at engagement and retention of Messenger apps. I used to work at Game Analytics as their head of publishing, and we had the uh, opportunity to see how the gaming market worked with over 10,000 apps. We took a look at our top 100 games, and we averaged those uh, numbers. We took a look at the session counts, uh, at the length of time sorry, spent in the, uh, in the session. All mobile games are short sessions. It's advisable for a normal app to be looking at two to three minutes per session and to keep people in that short period of time to perform your core action. But when you look at messenger games, the, the number of sessions and the time length of those sessions is very, very, very short. Usually around 30 seconds and then people are kicked out again. Almost no sessions go longer uh, than two minutes. And there's good reason for this. Remember you're inside of a messenger, it's not an app. You need to think about this in your design and think incredibly short periods of time. Design for 30 seconds. This is actually quite restricting, so uh, give yourself a little challenge and try and think of what games do work in 30 seconds or what rounds of what games work in 30 seconds. The next important thing, and this is why Messenger is interesting, is you can't play a game without a friend. It, it is inherently viral to the whole of the ecosystem. To start a game, you must have a friend. You're within Messenger, you choose a friend, you send that message to a friend. All of this leads to much more viral growth. When you're thinking of how to engage uh, consumers with a viral message, the first thing is think about your message. In this case, Everwing uses uh, dynamic content to create a, a new, uh, it takes my high score, it uses my Facebook profile, it also uses my dragons, which are on the left, the ones that I have unlocked. In this case, Words with Friends uses a dynamic message. This lusted is, and the, the picture of the board is the actual board from the game. So therefore, when I see it within my messenger, I'm actually reminded of the game that's going on, making it very encouraging to click and play again. The final sort of effective message you can use is a challenge-based message. It's always good to use, uh, again, dynamic. In this case, I got a two, uh, two hoops. and challenge someone with that question, can you beat it? Uh, this leads to a back and forth as you slowly, over time, uh, challenge each other. Let's think of retention though. Retention's that core metric that everyone's chasing in mobile. And the reason you sort of look to it as a key performance indicator is it's the idea of being able to bring people back. If you can bring someone back to your game, your game's in engaging over a longer period of time. As we've seen in, at Game Analytics as well, we saw the actual average retention for games has been falling for the past two years. That's partly due to the number of games, that's to do with the app stores, that's to do with people's habits. Overall, there's more apps on the app store, and therefore your app has a harder chance of retaining. However, when we add messenger games, we see retention at almost all points being higher. There's good reason for this though. There's a lot fewer messenger games at the moment, and there's also that inherently viral nature. So you have a natural push, me push mechanism 
that people engage with every time they send around to each other. And this has been, uh, we've seen at least, of the small number of games on the game analytics platform to just show longer retention for a longer period. Natural dyna dynamic content therefore retains. The best thing to get people to come back to your game is when the content is provided by your friends. It's very relevant to you. It's accurate. You understand it. You're interested in it. So, in conclusion, if you're going to th start thinking about messenger games, right now, scale is more important than monetization. The size of those, those messengers is where the interesting aspects lie. It's unlikely you're going to be able to make in-app purchase, so think about models that potentially could use video ads or any other form of uh, viral uh, uh, monetization. Design for very short sessions. 30 seconds is the key. If you can think of a round that lasts 30 seconds, you'll get people in and out again. Instant gameplay. As soon as someone starts the app, they should know what to do. They should be able to start playing. Anything that needs descriptions, tuitions, tutorials should be out. Try and take natural things that people understand and turn them into very short games. Building dynamic social features in your messages helps you to engage and get people back again. This is uh, where people uh, will retain longest. It will create that retention curve that you want to see. So, why are you not designing a messenger game already? Uh, I'm happy to take any questions, uh, and you can follow Mobile Free to Play at Mobile FTP, uh, and yeah, email us if you want. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. No questions? Uh, hi, my name is Mike. Hi, I'd Mike. like to ask you, what about uh, puzzle games for messengers like, um, I don't know, maybe 2048, you know, or chess or something like that. It's not 30 second sessions, it's a bit longer, maybe one minute or two. What do you think about that? Yeah, uh, chess is an ideal game. Chess because you have the asynchronicity. You have a board that dynamically changes, each time you come back to it, you have to reevaluate it. It's very much like pool. Very, very, and it's been proven in the past to be very good at asynchronous. 2048 is not a great example of a game that would work on Messenger because those sessions get too long. So if you think of it as what you want is a friend to send you something that challenges you to do something in a very short period of time that has a, a hard limit, uh, those work best. Or or you have a single opportunity. So the chess is a single move, is where you spend all your time thinking about one move, and then it's over. Or you have the 30 second hard limit. Um, the thing might be, could you build 2048 with a time limit? How far could you get in 30 seconds? Or how far could you get in 59, minute, uh, 59 seconds? It's um, about using, about forcing players into limits is more effective in this sort of case. Any other questions, maybe? Is anyone actually making a messenger game? Or has anyone tried? Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's the, it's the biggest, newest, most interesting market on mobile. Um, it's very un unknown, uh, and that's what's really interesting right now. So. Uh, the limits and the factors uh, that are going on uh, really reduce your gameplay scope. So when people think of games, they're often thinking of bigger, more elaborate experiences. Come back to basics again, and you can think of even checkers or something like this. At the moment, the opportunity is so huge for audience that that's where the interesting factors are. Um, yeah, so definitely consider it. Have a look. There's a lot of documentation. So the best documentation... Uh, always comes out from WWDC, which is actually about to happen in about a month or two. And F8, rewatch the videos uh, on F8 if you want to know more about Facebook Messenger. Sure. Hi, I'm Justin. Uh, so. I haven't checked out any of these games yet, so I don't I don't exactly know how it works. But uh, in, in the case of say words with friends, yeah, um, would it be possible for one person to start a, a challenge another person in words with friends that you know doesn't already have the app installed or, or anything, doesn't have an account set up, 
anything like that? How do they get past those barriers? Uh, yeah, so it's you can challenge anyone who doesn't have the app. So the first thing with Messenger that possibly I didn't describe clearly enough is they're not linked to an app. So they're wholly new app IDs. They are not uh, linked in any way. So the friends that you have in Words with Friends, let's say, are not going to be in this Messenger app. So it's all based within the Messenger ecosystem. So every challenge or every game is a fresh instance, which is, think of it as a web view where instead of having a memory about all of your uh, contacts, it just has a memory of this one instance and you create web views inside of each chat message. That's why HTML5 is basically being used as the main driving uh, technology here. Um, and it's the same with iMessage. In iMessage as, as well, you can't have interactions between games. So it's only the group or the chat uh, that understands this instance. And once that chat dies, the whole instance is forgotten. So you can't pass over XP between rounds or anything like that. Um, this does create limits. It really puts you into kind of a very, very uh, short, casual gameplay experience uh, that's meant really as a two-player uh, back and forth. But it's also kind of good, too, because you can like deliver this really enticing little corner of your app, the core gameplay, and steer people into a more fully featured. Correct, correct. It's... Um, yeah, I, it's almost like uh, yeah, tasters or demo versions right. would be would be a good way to think about it. However, there's still a lot of limits on actually driving people to your app. So you're not allowed on Facebook Messenger to link to your other app. You're not uh, uh, on iMessage as well. And on iMessage, you can link to an app, actually, sorry. Um, but uh, the way you have to think about Facebook Messenger is it is an experience within Facebook Messenger, and it's not supposed to be taken out of that. Mm -hmm. It's a unique feel f uh, to encourage uh, back and forth within the Messenger structure, so within messages. Thank you. Any questions, maybe? OK, so in case we have no questions, um, if you like Tom's presentation, don't forget to rate it on our mobile app. And we'll see each other in half an hour. We'll start the next presentation. Uh, you can also use this opportunity to go on the second floor and to see the indie showcase. Okay, so thank you. Thanks. Thank you.